Welcome to the top of the morning show. It's your girl TT from the D. And this morning we're going to talk about the seven stages of spiritual growth. I know you're wondering like, why are we doing that so early in the game? This is a part of your 30 day challenge. No, it really isn't, but it is going to allow you to gear yourself up, have a better understanding of what we're getting ready to embark upon and experience if you are interested and taking this journey with us. With that being said, I want to share a salute moment with all of my listeners across the globe, those that I am aware of according to the analytics through Anchor.fm. Salute to the United States, Bahrain, India, Brazil, Germany, Canada, United Kingdom, Ireland, Philippines, Italy, New Zealand, Poland, Puerto Rico, Japan, Indonesia, Australia, Saudi Arabia, Ukraine, Argentina, Finland, Mexico, Romania, Bulgaria, Israel, France, Netherlands, Switzerland, Bangladesh, Azerbaijan, Spain, Laos, Russia, Denmark, Egypt, Guam, Lebanon, Maldives, Kuwait, Republic of Lithuania, Dominica, Angola, Vietnam, Serbia, Portugal, Tunisia, and Czech Republic. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for being a listener. For each and every time you choose TT from the D, Tap on Tuesday, or if you choose the Top of the Morning Show, thank you. All right, let's talk about the seven stages of spiritual development. I'm not going to hold you long this morning. We're going to kind of jump into it. We all take a journey from time to time, but we can't be forced there. You have to just find yourself there. It's not easy to do at the same time. It's not hard to do either. However, like everything else in life, when we embark upon the spiritual pathway, it becomes a choice. And in your life, if you live in a free country, you present yourself with the opportunity to make choices. Right? Some will benefit you solely, and some will benefit you individually, collectively, or indirectly. Okay? And whether you like to admit it or not, Every now and then, I find the ability to want to lay burdens down, but yet feeling that there's nobody to lift those burdens, so you carry the world in your mind on your back. But I need you to be very aware that all you see and do is a makeup of who you are. Stage one, innocence. When we come into this world, when we're born into this world, we are as innocent as we will ever be in this whole life. We learn good things, bad things, and different things, right? We learn from good people, bad people, and different people. We learn about love, money, emotions, sexuality. We learn about hate. You get it? We live in a world where people, I would assume, want to be happy and joyful, yet they are negative and hateful in a lot of cases. What happens in innocence, however, when you start to feel that tug on you, the desire to fit in, it becomes a distraction, and you know how life goes. And you get a distraction that stops you from doing the one thing or the few things that align you with your purpose. We tapped into walking in your purpose last night on the Tapped In Tuesday X segment. If you didn't catch it last night, I implore you to check it out on TT from the D podcast. Stage number two fear and ego. As you grow, the inner ego emerges too. Sometimes it might outgrow you. That's when you realize you're completely at your own mercy. You're at the mercy of yourself. You're at the mercy of those that love and know you. We operate solely on love. In our hearts and in our minds. But outwardly we don't always show that. And you want to find yourself being able to be vulnerable to yourself. Allowing yourself to develop, grow. Creating the life you want and 
challenging yourself every step of the way. Stage number three, power. It is in you to desire the things that will make you happy. But when you get lost in other people's goals, dreams, and visions, it's hard to cipher through and know what's yours and what's theirs. As you're trying to create the life you want, make sure it's the life you want and not the life you've been told. And you can become educated to your whole family thing, your career thing, educational growth thing. At the end of the day, you want to be able to sit back and say, I lived life. Okay? Stage four, giving. See, in this stage, you begin to realize that there is more to life than just personal power and growth within yourself. It's about giving. You think of ways that you can give back to the community. Give more time to those who you know can use it or need it or want it. Yet also finding self-time. Because oftentimes, more than not, we don't take care of ourselves, our self-needs, because we're always consumed with everyone else's need. And it can be a critical time in your life where you really need to unwind, unpack, and just say that life is about to be about me at this moment. That does not mean you're selfish, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That means that you choose you so that you can become stronger mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and then you can empower others. Okay, stage five, the seeker. Now, you begin to really tap into your spiritual practices as you get older, I feel. The decisions you make now would totally be chosen differently years ago when you were younger. And they still can change and channel to be totally different five years from now because it's called growth. You'll begin to look at yourself in the mirror and say, who are you? Have you ever found yourself looking in the mirror and saying, I don't know you. I remember one day me. I could say I looked in the mirror and said, I don't know you. And that's got to be very scary, very transparent to be able to say, I don't know you. And mean it. Okay? Stage number six, the sage. You're probably like, what? The consciousness of your mind becomes fully open and awakened. You will internally see actions unfold before your very eyes. You'll see growth in who you are and the way you behave, the roles you play. Whether you're a mother or father or sister or brother or cousin or aunt or uncle, grandma or grandpa. You will start to see it. And... You know, remember being a kid and when people would talk about death, you like, I don't want to talk about that because you was afraid. It starts to become a part of your understanding that in life, death must come for all of us. It's just another part of the life in which you live. I, I love to reference and I love to say that if you live, then you must die. And if you die, I hope that you've lived. Right? However... There's still separation between the giver and the recipient. Yet, that sage season holds a lot of different roles for you to play. Okay? And the last is spirit. Stage seven is spirit. Your heart will know when it's fully awakened. Because you will start to experience things you've never experienced, desire to do things on a deeper level. Divine mixed with unity and oneness. There's no longer any separation between what you give and what you receive. You understand the true meaning of there's no I and team in a relationship is you and me. Right? It's us. Right? You and me. No, if they say we're one thing is us. My husband says we have to be a part of the world, right? So we can be in the world but not of it. If that makes sense. And as you go through these stages, let me remind you, you'll be distracted. You'll be distracted by people. 
people will throw in there to sit on why you shouldn't do what you're doing and how things could be better in a different light and manner. And I'm here to remind you that it's not so true. Life is but a moment. Live within each moment you have as you're working upon your spiritual growth, learning who you are in the version of God. Not so much who you are in the version of God, like, oh, but who you are in spite of who the world tells you you are, if that makes sense, right? Determining what makes you happy, what doesn't make you happy, what brings you joy, what doesn't bring you joy. It's one and the same, but yet it's different. Give yourself the opportunity to find out the beautiful person that dwells within you. It doesn't look like anything on the outside because it has no image, but you certainly will find it. I hope that you will entertain taking the 30-day challenge with me, the 30-day the 30-day scripture challenge that is. Starting September 1st, we'll talk about 30 different scriptures, one scripture at a time, from all over the place. And don't forget, you will be able to listen Monday through Sunday, seven days a week for 30 days for the Top of the Morning Show. We'll talk about a scripture, right? And then for the Top of Tuesday version, we will embark upon a scripture for a live discussion. I hope that you will take that journey with us, but if not, I'll see you in October when we get back to the basics. Until then, it's your girl Tootsie from the D, and I'll see you soon.